Welcome to another episode of Coach Hayes Football. Coaches, is the outside zone stretch play giving you problems? If so, I may have a solution for you. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. All right, so we're back. We're going to jump straight into it. All right, how to defend the outside zone. First, our run concept is outside zone. How do we determine that by a pre-snap read? Even. Even simply means that the running back is in same line, is in the same line of the quarterback. All right. Our alert to our defense is Oz, Oz, Oz. That stands for outside zone. And again, I talk about the pre-snap read and the alert in a previous episode. Now I have it listed above. Next is our mesh. At our mesh point, that is between the quarterback and the backfield, whether it be the running back or, like I said, jet sweep receiver. That back should have a 45 degree uh, shoulder turned towards the line of scrimmage. So when he receives that ball, his ball, his shoulders will be 45 degrees to almost um, parallel to the line of scrimmage. That means it's a perimeter play. Play characteristics is that that ball is looking to bend or stretch to the outside, to the perimeter. All right. Again, outside zone does say outside, but they're looking to cut it back because they're hoping that you overrun it and overflow the play. How we defeat that is what we call fill and spill technique. And we'll talk about that here on our next slide. All right, so here we have our diagram of outside zone. All right, again, I pre-drawn uh, up some of the blocking just to save some time. All right, so from our defensive perspective, they want to run the outside zone towards our left-hand side. All right, so they want to run the ball this way towards our left-hand side. All right, here, point of attack, they are trying to hook, all right, our rush in. They want to double team here on our nose and work their way up to the mic backer. They will also like to double team here our three technique and work their way and cut off our wheel linebacker, and they're going to leave our big end alone, all right? He's going to be the read for the outside zone read play for the quarterback. Also here, if you look, our slot uh, receiver would like to pin our Sam inside, all right? And they, they can either do one or two things, either block our field corner or they can push crack to our free safety. All depends on how they choose to do it from an offensive perspective, all right? If you notice, our back is even. We talked about even. He's in the same line as the quarterback. Once he receives that ball, his shoulders will be in a 45-degree angle. When he receives this ball, he's coming here, okay? His shoulder's in a 45-degree angle. Now, what that back is looking for is the first open available hole, all right? If that happens to be here, he will bend it right through there and get what he can. If this end happens to fall inside, he would continue to take this ball outside to the perimeter. That's fine, all right? Now, we want to talk about how we're going to defend that. All right, so our mesh here is 45 degrees. You see 45 degree shoulders here at the mesh point, right at that mesh point, okay? So where the exchange is for the ball between the quarterback and the running back, shoulders are at 45 degrees. Now, what we're going to do from a defensive standpoint, all right, is what we call field and spill technique. Let me start off first with our end. We've always learned the push and pull technique when we're playing against zone. But again, we're going to do things just a little bit different. If he happens to get captured by this offensive tackle, all right, if he happens to get captured by this offensive tackle, I'm okay with that. And that's fine. That's not a point. That's not a problem at all. All right. Long as he gets captured and he stays on his inside and he pushes down the line, I'm okay with that. If he runs up the field, we're going to have a problem because he's going to create an open door. All right. Next, here comes the field technique. The filler is our Sam Backer. Sam Backer must play inside the block of this. Why? Because we want the ball carrier to continue to have this ball to go sideways. He can run 30 yards he wants, long as he's going east and west. If he goes 30 yards north and south, we're in trouble. All right? He is our field technique. Okay? Now, our 
spill technique. And the reason we call him spill, because he is picking up the spill uh, of the back. The back is spilling out to the side, so we call him the spiller. All right, so the filler is our sound backer, and our spiller, meaning the guy who's picking up the spill, who's wiping up the spill, is our mic backer. All right, he is out running. Once he, once he determines what the mesh point is, he sees 45 degree shoulders, he's taking off, scraping right off of the butt of the sound backer. All right, playing the inside shoulder, tracking him the entire way, the inside shoulder of the uh, running back. Okay, our wheel backside. Okay, depends on what happens here with our big end. If we get a down block by the offensive tackle, we're going to treat him just like we do inside zone. Again, talked about that in previous in a previous episode on how to defend the inside zone. Inside zone, excuse me. I do not want to change his technique because we get a different play. If he gets a down block by the deep, by the offensive tackle, we're going down the line and we're chasing that ball and we we like a, 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 a wild dog. We're trying to get to that ball. So we're going to send him down the line of scrimmage and chase that ball. So if it does happen to cut back for any reason, he should be able to make a play right there, ear holding that guy, attacking that hip, and driving through that, that ball carry. If the if the the big end runs down the line, he will now hesitate and kind of sit back for the zone read. Why? Why is he not worried about the cutback? Because we've taken care of that here with the big end. All right, he's down the line. We're going to take care of that with the big end. All he does is do is hesitate, make sure he doesn't have the ball. Once he doesn't have the ball, then he can pursue on and pursue to the ball. Not a problem. Okay? So let me talk about this too, our safety. Our field safety. He is our force player. So now, once he sees this the slot back, once he sees the slot back engage into our Sam, he is now going to come and become our force player. He's going to create that wall. He's going to build a wall right here. So that ball has to turn back inside. Notice we're going to vice this player between our free safety and between our Mike Backer. Okay? Backside safety here, same thing. What he's doing is he's, he sees the block, he hesitates. Once he sees empty hand, he now pursues to the ball. Not a big deal, and everybody else pursues to the ball. In our field side corner, he's what we call secondary force. His job is to make sure that ball gets tackled at any cost. He's not worried about how many yards it gained. He's worried about making sure it's not a touchdown in case it happens to slip through all of those guys. Let's slip to a, couple, let's slip to a clip to see uh, how it is in live action. Okay, again, we talked about outside zone. We have that. We have pretty much the same alignment, except they have a tight end right here. That's not a big deal, all right? Let's, walk, let's, go, through a, let's go through this clip, and let's see what we got. We get the handoff. Notice the mesh, 45-degree shoulders. Now, let's talk about this. This end... Again, no man's land. I talked about that before in our inside zone clip. He's in no man's land. He's not creating pressure on the running back. He's not creating pressure on the quarterback. He's in no man's land. Right now, if you notice, he could have been this back. The, the, the defensive end could have chased this ball down when it hesitated and made a tackle in the backfield. All right, let's go back a little bit and let's pause it. I talked about the defensive end here. All right, the defensive end. If he gets captured inside of this, I'm okay. As long as he's not running up the field, and you're gonna, I'm going to show you exactly why right now in this very moment. Look at the defensive end here to the bottom. Once he runs up the field, is what I call opening the door. He's opened the door. He never broke the path. He's never changed the path of the running back whatsoever. That back continued on on the path he would have continued on, whether he was hooked inside or not. But what he didn't do is create that ball to bounce. All right? Let's go back here. Let's look at our Sam Backer. Our Sam Backer. All right? In this particular clip, they have him kind of lined up real wide. I prefer him to be to split the difference and be more or less inside here. If he is inside here, what he can do is spill this ball. He comes down, he spills that ball. Therefore, this ball carrier has to do what? Continue to go sideways. All right? 
Once he continued to go sideways, if this safety was outside, he would now fill out here. Once you see him filling out here, our Mike Backer, as you can see right here, would be what? Our spill player. He's picking up all the spillage, and he'll come right over the top, and he's attacking the inside shoulder. Our safety is attacking the outside shoulder. We have him viced. Our corner is secondary force. All right? We're making sure right here it's no pull by the quarterback. He pulls it to run. We have one guy here. We have another guy here just in case. He's empty-handed. We'll take off to the ball. And then he'll pursue to the ball as well. All right? And again, he'll be a late pursuit if they had that much space. So as you can see, that's how we'll fit this up. All right? Our mic backer is over the top. So when he gets ready to get this block, when he gets ready to get this block from the, from the back, he doesn't have to engage right here. The mic backer does not have to engage. He will simply outrun that guy. All right, because it's a guy, he's playing in space. All right, now let's look at this. Look what happens right here with this free safety and the Sam. If you notice, both of them get caught inside. Once they get caught inside, this one blocker has taken out both of them. Therefore, it lets the running back get an easy trail outside. He's being blocked. It's an easy touchdown. The only person who can help you now is the backside safety, who's approximately maybe 20 yards away. All right, and that's just unfair to him. And hell, they only got 15 yards to go. So by the time he can make this tackle, as you can see, it's already touchdown. And as you see who makes the tackle, backside safety has to run, run, run to make that tackle because there was no force player. Their force player as the free safety or their Sam backer, depending on how they want to play it, but how we will play it, will simply be both of them got caught inside right there on that block, and it, and they let the, the running back get an opportunity to get free. Okay, great. So now we figured out a way in which to stop the outside zone stretch play. You have to make sure that you have a field player, you have a spill player, and you also have a force player. Those three guys are the main ingredients to stop an outside zone. Please, if you have any comments or any suggestions, please leave them in, in the section in the comment section below. Also, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe by hitting my logo right over my head. And thank you again for joining another episode of Coach Hayes Football. See you at the 50-yard line.